Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Guri. I'm one of the consultants in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homet and Fertility Center. And today I'm going to talk to you about the use of an antagonist. We have traditionally believed that you start antagonists between day five, day six, day seven. Started on a fixed protocol rather than on a flexible protocol. And that is what the earlier meta-analysis that show that a flexible protocol gave poorer results. In the past many years, we have got better at the antagonist protocol. Our cycles are safer, have equal success rate, and we have lowered the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation. Now, let's have a look at how different studies are coming. The question is, when do you start the antagonist? Now, this is very much a retrospective analysis and not a randomized controlled trial, but gives us an idea into what's going on with the large number of antagonist cycles which have been done. And this was looking at cycle day, estrogen levels, lead follicle count, analysis of over 27,000 cycles, which to decide the optimal start date of an antagonist. And this was published in April 2018 in Fertility Sterility. The criteria when to start the antagonist was not standardized. It was a retrospective cohort study from 20 centers. 55% had observations on lead follicle size, estrogen, and the start of the antagonist. And what did you see? Have a look at the graph. It showed that the maximum pregnancy rates were achieved when the antagonist was started with a lead follicle being between 14 and 15.9 millimeter. Again, the day of stimulation, around day six of stimulation, and an estrogen of between 500 to 599 picogram per liter. If you start an antagonist after follicle size was 16 millimeter, pregnancy rates dropped by 25%. If you started before day five or after day eight, pregnancy rates also declined. Fertilization was highest when the estrogen was in the optimal range. Estrogen seems to be an independent predictor of success rates in this study with the antagonist start. There were very high levels of E2 also demonstrated that they could be lower weight babies. The later you start the antagonist, you may lose the receptivity window. And also if you start the antagonist very early when the estrogen is very low, it may affect the mitotic activity of follicular cells. Again, this is all presumption, and that is what the, the, the authors are do, doing, is they're saying, well, uh, why is it that the pregnancy rate could be lower if you started earlier? Or if you started later, why do the pregnancy rates start declining? At the end, this is a very large sample size. 44% did not have adequate details, but it tells us a few things. In an antagonist cycle, if you want to fine-tune your success rates, look at the cycle day, look at the follicle size, look at the E2 levels. These should not be ignored. So even though this study is a very large retrospective data, it starts getting us thinking. Are we all right to just use one fixed protocol or should we st start managing? And if you start looking at some of the protocols which I use, especially one which looks at poor responders, you'll see I start using protocols that delay the start of an antagonist using different drugs. And what it allows us to do is it allows us to allow follicle growth to occur. Whether or not this can stand the test of research, I don't know. But sometimes our personal observations do suggest that we may see a better pregnancy rate. Anyway, thank you very much. If you like these videos, please share them. Let this knowledge flow. 
these are reviews of papers which I do once or twice a week between me and my team. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.